Parliament Hill, just after 8 o'clock in the morning. Ottawa is our focus to begin this hour. Members of Parliament now face the same rule that millions of other Canadians do in their workplaces. MPs will have to show they're fully vaccinated if they want to sit in the Commons next month. News of that vaccination mandate came out late last night, made by MPs who represent the Liberals, the New Democrats, the Bloc and the Conservatives, the members of the Board of Internal Economy, the body that governs operations of the House. And Janice McGregor has the details of their decision. She's live in Ottawa this morning with more on the rule and its potential impact. Janice. Good morning, Heather. Yeah, what we're looking for in particular is hopefully soon some conservative reaction to this decision because all the other parties have made really clear their support for this kind of policy. They say all their MPs are vaccinated. It's really the conservatives that haven't been able to say that. They've never answered questions about exactly how many of their uh, caucus members are or are not vaccinated. I can tell you uh, the media has tried to do uh, tallies of that, including our own. A lot of people around this town have scratch lists based on public statements or things they've been able to ask MPs about their vaccination status. It's not clear whether the party itself has a tally. They've never shared one, but I can tell you, you know, just our own, we, we you know, have found several dozen Conservative MPs who have been happy uh, to indicate that, yes, they are vaccinated. Some have put on social media pictures uh, of their documentation for that, but there are at least as many who are refusing to disclose. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean they aren't vaccinated? Maybe. It could also mean that on principle or out of solidarity for their views uh, about the rights uh, of perhaps unvaccinated uh, MPs, uh, they don't want to say. Uh, so, you know, they can, they can kind of stand with those people. Uh, nevertheless, though, in making this decision, the Board of Internal Economy, this committee, has to consider its obligations as an employer. Parliament Hill is a workplace, a work space for a lot of people, their own staff, but also journalists like myself, members of the press gallery, security guards. It's their responsibility to make sure everybody up there uh, is safe in a town where, frankly, every other federal civil servant is required to be vaccinated to continue in their employment. This decision was made behind closed doors in camera, so we can't really tell you much about how the arguments went down. We only know where it landed in the end. Uh, here is New Democrat Peter Julian. He represents his party on the committee ex explaining their thoughts. The reality is uh, we have 338 MPs being in one room. It would not make sense to have members of parliament or guests that are not vaccinated. So making sure everybody fu is fully vaccinated is a special uh, precaution. We have to make sure that we're taking appropriate precautions, that we're obeying the, the public health requirements and ensuring that members of parliament aren't part of the problem. We know, Janice, uh, those 338 MPs, everyone duly elected, can they be blocked from representing their constituents? I can tell you there have been a lot of legal arguments circulating in this town on this very question. The sense seems to be, look, MPs are the master of their own domain. It is this committee that sets the rules for that domain. But ultimately, uh, this decision may need to be backed up uh, by a vote in the House of Commons, although the vote would presumably pass if you look at the math of how many seats each of these parties have. Uh, but if an unvaccinated MP is blocked, unable to vote because he can't he or she can't enter uh, the chamber, unable to represent constituents' views in important parliamentary debates, that would seem to be perhaps a question of parliamentary privilege. That could be something on which uh, the House of Commons Speaker has to rule when the House uh, resumes sitting and that speaker is elected on November 22nd. It is a big deal uh, to block someone from, from entering a legislature to which they have been duly elected. And I want to be really clear about what the stakes are here for the Conservatives. You need 170 votes to win, uh, uh, sorry, 170 MPs to win a vote in the House of Commons if you are passing legislation or in a minority parliament if you have a, a vote of non-confidence in the government. The Liberals coming out of this election have 159 seats. So let's imagine a hypothetical scenario where you have, say, a dozen Conservatives who, because they won't show proof of vaccination, can't be in the House, can't vote. 
that would be enough to effectively allow the Liberals to govern like a majority. They could never lose then a House vote, even if all the opposition parties got together to vote against them. So those are the stakes here. And that brings us to a decision now that all the parties have to make and agree on about the way forward for this parliament, whether it will continue to use the hybrid technology that they had been using kind of earlier in the pandemic to allow people to vote and participate in debates remotely. Yves-Francois Blanchet from the Bloc has been really clear about how he does not want this. He says, you know, you get a needle or, or you know, you, you can't come. Uh, and Conservatives, too, have been really clear about how they want in-person only sittings. That uh, O'Toole's office has said that. A number of MPs have said that for the record. So what do they do here? Because continuing some kind of a hybrid house format could be a compromise for these unvaccinated MPs to allow them to do their job. It also lets any MP unable to travel with health concerns, needing to mm -hmm. isolate, to continue to do their work representing their constituents in the months to come. Uh, the Liberal House Leader's Office last night issued a statement saying it would support hybrid sittings for this reason, giving MPs the flexibility uh, to respond to the changing circumstances of COVID-19. Janice McGregor in Ottawa 